I was fortunate to have known Harvey Mill, and never did I know that decades later, I would meet his nephew, and I can tell you anyone that has known Harvey, I call him half the time, I've known him for some years, and I'll go Harvey, <laughs> you know. He's so much like his uncle. And you know, some people say, well, you know, Stuart Milk is following the steps of his uncle. But I kind of disagree on that because, first of all, sadly, of course, uh, Harvey was knocked down before his time, wise. Um, the th things that Stuart has done nationally, I mean, I'm sure that Harvey's smiling, but he has created his own steps and his own journey and global. If you think about what's happening global-wise, and you'll get into it, many more American leaders should be involved in this, should be giving. They're starting, I've had the honor of going with them in Central America and Europe. Let me tell you, they just, to know that there's America that cares, to know America comes all the way there, and to know that he's a nephew of it, it's, it gives him so much hope. We all know that it wasn't Obama's logo, it was Harvey Notes before. You gotta give him hope. And I've seen it in person and even in, in Mexico, how he does give him hope. And he doesn't like me to talk about this, but real quickly, in some of these countries he goes to are countries that have changed their laws, that are getting more. And then remember, in our country used to be illegal to be homosexual. And many countries you visit, it's against the law. You can be in prison and, and killed just because you're homosexual. He goes there, and he never talks about it, but there are threats on his life. Anytime I hear, he just came from Vietnam, which is okay, because uh, he just got, I think he was one of the first gay leaders invited there, and communist Vietnam. But this man risks his life going to these countries. And let me tell you, there's not another American leader I wish there were more that would follow his wisdom. The hope he gives our global brothers and sisters is something that's so badly needed. So he's not following the steps of Harvey. He's creating his own, his own journey and a journey that's going to benefit our global community. You guys just know that the reason I'm here, the reason that I was able to come here, is because Wells Fargo brought me in, um, as they have for their for the other installations of this wonderful mural, and I'm going to touch a little bit on the importance of, of the business community doing out-of-the-box things like what Wells Fargo is doing, but please, again, thank our partners at Wells Fargo for, for allowing me to be here. Uh, but I really want to get into just some of the global stuff. I've been doing global work for, for, for over a decade. I'm not going to talk so much about my personal relationship with Harvey but about the foundation and why we do global work. So Ann Cronenberg, who was my uncle's campaign manager, is the co-founder of the Harvey Milk Foundation. And we formally created the Harvey Milk Foundation at the White House, at the, at the request of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So he was an honoree with my uncle for the um, Medal of Freedom. And uh, I had a very kind of surreal moment where I'm at the White House, with the actual recipients, there were 14 recipients and two people were accepting on behalf of someone else. So it was myself and Kara Kennedy. Kara was accepting on behalf of her father, Ted, who was still alive, but he was not well enough to travel there, and myself. And so Desmond Tutu had been complimenting Kara on all the work that she's done in the name of her two uncles, President Kennedy and Senator Robert Kennedy and said, you know, you do all these wonderful foundations, you're on the board, and he turned to me and he said, well, I know you've been speaking as an openly gay nephew of Harvey, but you've got to do more. There are people all around the world who are suffering because they're LGBT. And he said that people of color have suffered all around the world, but not everywhere. Women have suffered all around the world, but not everywhere. He said LGBT people suffer everywhere around the world, and Harvey, took those bullets for everyone, and you've got to do more. And so that's why we formed the Harvey Milk Foundation. The Milk Foundation, domestically, we do a lot of work around Harvey Milk Day. We work with Equality California to create Harvey Milk Day. Um, the bill that passed, uh, uh, we now have four years of official recognition of a Harvey Milk Day in California. We're working in some other states on that. Um, 
Um, we do Harvey Milk diversity breakfast. We've celebrated Harvey Milk at the White House uh, with the Harvey Milk Champion of Change Award that the president gave out. Um, so we do a lot of work domestically. But as you know, we've got historic times in the United States. And in particular, the last few years. This is really history making. Um, part of that element of history making is the business community support. So here, this is actually the Los Angeles Wells Fargo branch. Um, and then we've got where, I have to correct the next slide, um, is Wilton Manors, not Fort Lauderdale, where I live. So um, just so you know, Wilton Manors is kind of like the West Hollywood of, of the East Coast. Um, but uh, we had a great celebration in Wilton Manors. Um, this is really game-changing, that people walk into a commercial business that realizes that it's good. Hello, my name is Ernesto Ardondo, and I'm the area president for San Diego here at Wells Fargo. Um, I am a, a straight ally. I am married uh, to my beautiful wife and two children, me and Emma. And today is about uh, celebrating diversity, history, and most importantly, pride. So, uh, um, hello everyone, uh, good evening. My name is Ernesto Ardondo, and it is an honor and privilege to be here with all of you to celebrate diversity, to celebrate history, and most importantly, to celebrate pride here in Hillcrest. So, through grant sponsors and voluntary activities, uh, we support pro programs of nonprofit organizations serving the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender uh, community. And well, Wells Fargo, for over 25 years, um, has implemented internal and external programs that demonstrate the commitment to the LGBT community and to the team members here. Uh, some of the things that we're so proud of is in 2013, Diversity Incorporated ranked Wells Fargo number one in its top 10 companies for LGBT employees and among the top 50 diverse companies in the United States. When Wells Fargo talks about diversity and inclusion, um, I think we that there's one thing that we really uh, hit home to our team members. Um, diversity, I, mean, I guess we can talk about this an analogy, diversity at the workforce, workforce is about being invited to the dance. Uh, inclusion is being invited to dance at that dance. And for our community, um, in the communities that we serve, uh, it's about diversity and it's about inclusion. So it is my great honor and privilege. Uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to um, hear him speak live for the first time and uh, when he spoke um, yesterday he spoke about um, how every person what, what rang to me was every person can make a difference and when I went home I started uh, um, I have two children and, and I was explaining where I was last night and uh, so they got online and we started looking at um, some of uh, uh, Stuart's uh, Uncle Harvey and some of the messages and there was a site, it was a link, um, and it talked about um, it was something I grew up with. Uh, you know, when you throw a pebble in, in the water, it's not the pebble that matters, it's the ripple effect. And to me, that's what um, Harvey Milk did, and that's what Stuart does every single day, both locally, nationally, and internationally. So it is with great honor to, uh, to please welcome Stuart Milk. Yes. Um, you know, Harvey, my uncle, I, I don't know how many people know this, but he walked these streets. Um, he was, he, his first experience was California in San Diego as a member of the Navy, as an as a instructor for Navy SEALs. Um, and he fell in love with California because of his experience in San Francisco. And there are many people here who, or there are, I should say, some very notable people here who interacted with my uncle um, when he was in California and while he was alive. And they usually ask me if I'm saddened that my uncle didn't get to see a day like today, didn't get to experience the fact that we have a city council president who's openly gay, that we have business leaders who are openly gay, publishers who are openly gay, city commissioners. And I always answer, the same way, which is that he absolutely did see this day. It's why he was able to go into work with not anonymous, but signed death threats every day in 1977, 78, signed death threats. Because he believed and he dreamed of this day. 
and you have all made that come true. We live in historic times. This is really historic times. I mean, someone was just telling me, oh, it was so long ago that the Supreme Court ruled that the federal government couldn't deny marriage equality. It was just last June. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have historic moments going on. And you've got history right here. I mean, we've got the first, first openly gay district attorney who you just heard from. We have, in 2007, talk about, it's, talk, the person who just told us it's sometimes easy to say you're going to do something to actually do it. So Mayor Saunders supported his daughter in an emotional speech in 2007 that sent shockwaves around this country, but also sent shockwaves to a party that was not including everyone. I mean, this is an historic individual who has not only led inclusion in this city, but sent a message globally across the world. And and uh, my, my friend Nicole, um, you know, you're, we've got someone in the room that has led every national march in Washington for LGBT rights starting in 1979. And I can't even begin the list. So we've got living history here. And a big part of that history is Wells Fargo. Um, there's a reason I bank at Wells Fargo. <laughs> And this was before I even interacted with Wells Fargo with the mural project or, or, or folks like Ernesto and Christina and um, someone that I'm going to introduce in a minute. My experience with Wells Fargo began in the late, late 2000s when they first came into the state of Florida. Now, you know, it's one thing to be pro-equality and pro-inclusion in a state like California, and you'll get that from people. But Wells Fargo went into the South. And the first thing they did was partner with pride organizations. They were the first financial institution in the 2000s to support pride organizations and to put that Wells Fargo wagon up front leading parades. And guess what? The other financial institutions followed. That's courage and that's history making. I have had the honor to be part of the mural project now um, and to be part of these unveilings, which Bev is laughing. Some have been more, more successful in terms of the actual unveiling, so we'll see how this one goes. Um, and she's a San, San Diego native, um, helped organize San Diego's first gay pride in, Mar in 1975. Um, and has continued to support it for 30 years. She was the first female director, executive director of the center, then called the Gay Center, um, and was also the assistant editor and editor of the Gay and Lesbian Times. Um, so I apologize that she wasn't able to be here, and we, uh, we'll just uh, recognize her that way. Bridget Wilson, we mentioned earlier. Involved in the struggle for LGBT rights since 1972, she was the first on the first volunteer staff at the San Diego LGBT Community Center, serving as the co-director of military counseling. She has served in many of the LGBT communities organizations and has also served on several San Diego LGBT Pride committees. Trained in law, she is a trusted advisor and tireless advocate for military service members. So. <laughs> Terry. Terry has been involved in creating and monitoring nonprofit organizations for the past 30 years with a focus on HIV and AIDS care, treatment and prevention, and has received numerous awards for his efforts. He served 15 years chief of the HIV, STD, and hepatitis branch of public health services for the County of San Diego, and continues to provide his expertise to numerous organizations. Thank you, Terry, for being here. Uh, Mayor uh, Nicole Murray Ramirez <laughs> has been a lifelong advocate for the LGBT and Latino communities and is currently the international president of the international court system with more than 68 chapters in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. A San Diego city commissioner, he has served on local, state, and national committees, too numerous to mention. Uh, we would like to say a special thanks to you, Nicole, for all your help, uh, enthusiasm, graciousness, good humor in helping us with this mural tonight. Um, <laughs> well, now we need to mail it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so we'll take a little bit over that one. Oh, well.